Matt Common, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Congratulations on some pretty good looking results. Uh, you've had a back to basics strategy focusing on the retail bank that seems to be working out for you. Ooh been very focused on delivering better outcomes for our customers, investing in our digital and technology and even though our profit was down 4% uh, on last year, it was well received mainly because I think we've uh, performed quite well given mm. the operating context. In particular, uh, this 4% growth in home loans to December, that's about one and a half uh, times ahead of the system. How have you achieved that? Yeah, during the period we've made sure that we've invested in both the technology and as well as our processes ensuring that we're giving a faster turnaround time and speed of decision to our customers so they can get certainty if they're uh, purchasing a new property. The focus on that has made, meant that we've actually competed very well against uh, other financial institutions and so as you mentioned our growth was one and a half time system over that period which is unusual given our size. You've also seen a one basis point improvement in the net interest margin. Uh, how have you managed to achieve that in such a low interest rate environment? Yeah, it was pretty flat over the period. One of yeah. the, the big benefits during the six months was what's referred to as the cash bill spread. Uh, and that contracted quite sharply, which gives us a benefit at the group net interest margin level. So notwithstanding lower interest rates, which again we guided the impact of that that will have on the full year and particularly in the second half and going into FY21 and 22, it was offset from just a change in the funding costs in this particular period. You say you want to lend, you're ready to lend. Obviously interest rates are at record lows, that's very good for borrowers. Uh, what do you see the hold up is in the market because volumes are still pretty low? Probably less reliant than a number of other institutions but I think uh, we've been able to navigate well through an evolving regulatory guidance. We feel very confident about what's required uh, from us to comply with responsible lending. As I said we've been very focused on making sure we manage those changes well and that our customers aren't impacted and they're receiving very high levels of service from us. And that's been rewarded with an increasing proportion of customers coming to us and enabling us to help them purchase a home, which we really appreciate. That's enabled us to grow faster than system. You say you want to lend, you're ready to lend. Obviously, interest rates are at record lows. That's very good for borrowers. Uh, what do you see the holdup is in the market? Because volumes are still pretty low. You know, in our experience, as you said, the housing market has picked up, particularly at the back half of last calendar year. We saw that house price increases, quite strong house price increases, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, to a lesser extent Brisbane. Uh, we've seen strong increase in applications and fundings, particularly for customers who are purchasing their own home, uh, first home buyers. And so while the credit growth itself uh, hasn't increased by as much, that's really been a function of many existing borrowers and understandably in a lower interest rate environment yeah. have been happy to continue to repay their loan off faster and that's reduced their overall balance. So we feel that the housing market at the moment is in quite a good equilibrium. We're not seeing excessive credit growth. We're not seeing too much investment lending that's going into it. House prices have stabilised. I think that's good for broader confidence. And we've been able to operate effectively within those uh, environments. Now, the RBA uh, was pretty sensitive about uh, its own decision to continually cut interest rates. Uh, some criticism it could lead to some riskier borrowing. Are you confident that you have uh, the protections in place to prevent that? I am I'm very confident about the overall uh, credit quality of our portfolio and that was again something that we highlighted today. Uh, some of the key ways that you look at that is through arrears rates across all of our consumer portfolios. They reduced over the six months. So we're very confident about the quality of uh, the home lending and business lending that we're writing. But you're right in the broader context of low interest rates, of course, can stimulate additional uh, investment and certainly in financing and so that combination of both what happens in the employment market which of course unemployment is very low uh, provided that continues to be the case we don't see an acceleration too much in in credit growth we don't see house prices uh, accelerating from where they are because on the other side of that of course housing affordability is a really important issue so provided that balance uh, is quite similar to where it is today then we have no immediate cause for concern but if we started to see an acceleration in credit growth and housing as we did particularly going into 2015 then that would be a concern for us and of course a number of our regulators. And what of interest rate cuts Matt? Some people were pretty surprised uh, that the RBA took the extent of the action 
it did last year. Do you foresee another cut? Because as you said, unemployment is still pretty low. Yeah, I think overall people would say the economy is doing quite well and the RBA has been clear that they'd like it to be doing a bit better. Mm. Um, I, I hope that the economic performance of Australia, notwithstanding some of the risks and uncertainty from coronavirus uh, in the near term, doesn't weigh too heavily on sentiment and further cash rate reductions aren't necessary. Uh, I think the RBA have taken a very you know, deliberate path to try and stimulate uh, the Australian economy uh, and their primary mechanism for doing that is through the cash rate. So I think it's fair to say there's probably still a, a bias to easing from here. But my ultimate hope is that uh, in combination with you know, businesses doing well, continued labour market, further investments in infrastructure, the housing market continuing to stabilise, there's enough economic uh, momentum in Australia to mean that the interest rate environment doesn't need to be reduced from here. Now, Matt, you talked about some of those threats to the economy. Uh, you mentioned the coronavirus, but another one has been the bushfires. We've had this devastating summer. You've put $100 million aside in provisions uh, as a result of the bushfires. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, we put aside, and we mentioned today, $83 million Sorry. of in, you know, insurance claims, but also yep. a separate $100 million on top of that for uh, potential loan impairment re resulting from both the drought and bushfires. We've been watching that very closely and of course the tragic events uh, that have unfolded over the summer. I think the RBA's uh, analysis in the context of, yes, it, it certainly has an impact in the near term and when we've studied previous natural disasters, that's largely been the case because there are significant investments in the recovery. And of course, we're really uh, committed to making sure that we're helping all of our customers uh, recover and uh, rebuild those affected communities. Yeah, and uh, some of the viewers at home with shares obviously be interested in the dividend. Uh, your decision on there to keep it flat? Yes, given the performance that we've been discussing as well as a very strong capital position, really the common equity tier one being well above the APRA's 10.5% uh, are unquestionably strong. Uh, we were able to declare a fully franked interim dividend of $2, which is, which is flat, and also that we will be neutralising the dividend reinvestment plan. Matt, we're about a year on from the end of the Royal Commission. Uh, do you think your bank, the CBA, has changed in that time? How has it changed and how has banking changed in Australia as a result of the Banking Royal Commission? Well, I think both have changed significantly and I see that as the chair of the Australian Banking Association. I see the commitment from all of the, my fellow CEOs uh, of their respective institutions uh, how much work was required and their deep commitment to it. And that's certainly been uh, the case at the Commonwealth Bank. I by no means say that that work is over. Part of our results, we release an update on our response to the Prudential Inquiry, uh, how we're going on the implementation of various Royal Commission recommendations. And so I'd say a year on, as you said, we're making very good progress. I think there's a number of very clear differences, including some of the changes that we've made to fees and pricing, which is one of the reductions in our overall profit today, down $415 million, and that's savings for our customers. So I feel substantial change, but still more work to do, and we're absolutely committed to making sure that happens. Now, you've been forced to put aside uh, hundreds of millions in remediation costs so far as a result of the Royal Commission and other scandals. Uh, do you think you've hit the high water mark in terms of these costs? Are you through the worst of it? Hopefully, uh, much closer to the end of the beginning. And of course, these remediation provisions should never have been necessary. Uh, what I said today was in the first six months, we paid out another $100 million uh, to customers. Uh, the majority of that uh, to wealth customers, uh, some banking refunds and remediation and that as well. And the majority of the remaining compensation is really set aside for what's known as the aligned uh, advice or financial advisors, the ongoing service fees and we are committed, we've got a very large team working on customer remediation to try and complete that as quickly as possible. Matt Common, thanks for joining us. Pleasure, thank you.